I'm pleased to welcome Ty Bosflug, who um, graduated, what now, has it been two years, Ty? I believe it's, yeah, it's been two years. Okay, great. And uh, you were a part of uh, our Northwest Stories project. You worked uh, also with Science and Memory and, um, and now are doing uh, freelance work for the Trailblazers. You've also done work for Nike. And so I thought in terms of videography, you know, you would be a great person to speak with um, to just kind of give students some sense of like, you know, how you make the transition from, um, from you know, college to career. So first, let's just start by talking about, you know, like how you discovered your own passion for video and at what point. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I think like a lot of people my age, my earliest memories of sort of visual storytelling and documentary were my high school history class and the substitute teacher would be in, that old TV would come rolling in and Ken Burns would be playing for the next two hours. And <laughs> I guess that's kind of when I found out that I definitely engaged more with sort of visual information rather than the stuff I was trying to read out of the textbooks and stuff like that. Uh, I think the first year of college for me was when I began to really explore the more like cinematic elements of documentary and filmmaking. Um, I was on Vimeo staff picks every day after class, just kind of finding things to inspire me and, and trying to learn along the way. Um, and I, I think that's kind of when I started to recognize that I could learn a lot more from these stories that people were telling than I was learning in a majority of my elective classes and, and whatnot. So um, I guess I waited a couple of years till I actually picked up a camera for the first time, um, but I knew what I wanted to do by that time and I knew what stories I wanted to tell. And uh, yeah, I guess it just kind of went from there. Started shooting as much as I could and as often as I could and worked with some really amazing people along the way. And, here we are a couple of years later, still growing, still learning every day, but it was an incredible experience with the SOJC. And I think what's really interesting about your story is that unlike many people who pick up a camera much earlier, you had a, a steeper learning curve. So how did you, I mean, you kind of touched on a little bit, but how did you really kind of grow your skills to the point where you're now working for some of the top brands and sports companies, you know, out there? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I think it started with intention. I, I didn't really pick up a camera and just say like, I have a camera and now I'm a filmmaker. Like I had a lot of direction when I bought, when I bought my first setup, like I knew what I wanted to do. I knew the stories that I wanted to tell. And I was like, I need to check off these boxes before I even start handling a camera first. I need to know how to light an interview. I need to know how to conduct a proper interview. Like here, here are the steps that I'm taking before I'm even shooting something in the first place. So I think it, it was really just to get myself inspired, get myself asking the right questions, and then I could start practicing the more technical skills down the road. Um, but yeah, I think, I think it comes with intention. I think it comes with understanding what you want to do before you actually start doing it. Mm -hmm. So how did you make the transition uh, right out of school? I mean, what, what, you know, how did you get into doing freelance work? And I know yeah. you also launched a company with a, another alum. Yeah, I think it was a, probably a week after graduation, I moved up to Portland and I had been a Eugene kid born and raised with an admiration for Oregon. So I knew I didn't really want to move outside of that yet, but I, I needed to change of pace. So um, I was super fortunate to be put in touch with a producer at Nike's Global Communication Production Studio. Uh, and I began freelancing for them for a couple months as an editor. Um, and I knew it wasn't going to be anything like super permanent. That's kind of something I learned right off the bat with uh, a lot of these freelance gigs. You never really know when things are going to just, you're not going to be needed anymore. And, and there's not a whole lot of permanence to things. But um, I knew that I, I wanted to start connecting with a lot of peers that I had been working with in the SRJC. And there's a huge community, especially in filmmaking and production. Like it's a very tight knit community. Everybody knows everybody. So just sending out a lot of cold emails, like phone calls and stuff like that, just trying to get in touch with people and started connecting with a, a lot of alumni. And Gus was someone who I met through the Northwest Stories class that Ed was teaching my junior year of college. And we had talked a little bit in the class, but didn't really know each other much outside of that. And we linked up and we had coffee and we just sort of started talking about what we wanted to do within the industry and what our goals were. And a lot of the things we were talking about aligned and we sort of parted ways and continued down our own individual freelance roads. Uh, we were both working as PAs for a lot of like higher end commercial productions and stuff like that, just doing the dirty work. And, but we would see each other a lot. And uh, we started recognizing like a lot of the people we were working with, like these were some people we really admire. And, and th this is the sort of work that we want to continue doing and here are the people that we don't really want to become in the industry because there's a lot of that 
Uh, and finally we were just like, you know what, we should start doing this stuff together. Like let's start pitching ourselves as a team. And uh, we started doing that. We, we kind of took inventory of a lot of companies that we really admired around the Portland area uh, that were doing some amazing work, not necessarily just in production, but just various other small scale companies and looking at the, looking at their website, seeing if they had a visual presence and anything to do with video. And if they didn't, we would sort of reach out to them and say, Hey, here are the services we can provide. And, and that's kind of what got the ball rolling. We created our LLC and we started working with the variety of various clientele around the Portland area. And we were shooting as much as we could. And we were taking a lot of low budget projects and doing a lot of stuff for free even just to start building our reel because we knew the reel was gonna was gonna land us the bigger stuff down the road and ultimately that's what happened the reel i believe is something that was super beneficial to us and gus is now the head videographer for washington state for their medical department and i've been with the trailblazers for about 10 months now um and it was all because of of the con consistent work that we were doing and putting ourselves on a deadline doing as much as possible and that's kind of how we got to where we are today. I would say you also leveraged uh, relationships through professors. You know, a lot of times people don't come to office hours or they don't <laughs> see the value of making themselves known. Um, and I think, you know, um, I can say firsthand, you know, you, <laughs> you stood out uh, in doing that and it made me and others, I think, comfortable with giving you referrals that were critical you know definitely I think you got to do it early and often and I, I think I was sort of intimidated of the whole structure within the SOJC here's a lot of talented people here's some people who are super well known in the industry and it's kind of intimidating at the start but if you just let let them know who you are as a person first before you get to the work I feel like that's super super crucial there's some really really amazing faculty in the SOJC and everyone wants wants the best for you and, and wants to help and a lot of people have the connections like Ed was the one who introduced me to the producer at Nike and and I work alongside one of Torsten's best friends who worked at the Oregonian with him for like 20 years now and there's just so many connections that branch out of the SOJC so taking advantage of that early and often is super crucial. Mm -hmm. So tell us about working with the trailblazers and how I'm sure that's uh, you probably pinch yourself sometimes that you're actually <laughs> doing that but yeah, I mean, I, I feel incredibly fortunate. I have nothing but amazing things to say about the organization. And I was super fortunate to be, be part of an extremely talented wave of interns. I believe there's 27 of us this, uh, this, this past season. It ended a bit abruptly, but um, yeah, I mean, I, I, can't, I can't be any luckier, honestly, to work alongside some of these talented and driven creative people. And my position specifically sort of covers all the bases of production, like although I was primarily a shooter and an editor, but I was working a lot on a variety of projects from your traditional basketball, like highlight reels and corporate sponsor videos to more stuff that I was doing in college and in Northwest stories and more of the documentary work and stuff like that. And I, I feel super grateful to have been around people who saw what I was able to do in that field. And they really encouraged me and pushed me to do what I loved. And um, they had me shoot and edit a, a episodic documentary series called rip citizens which was cut a bit short because of the pandemic but i was able to complete an episode on my own and i learned a lot through that whole through that whole process and i'm able to continue growing and it's something i'm really proud of and i'm excited to see what the future holds once everything sort of gets back to normal mm -hmm. what do you know now that you wish you knew when you were still a student mm. <laughs> yeah i mean it's, it's a tricky question, but I would say if I were, if I were to give that advice to students, um, I would just say that t to take advantage of the opportunities that are right in front of you. Um, it's difficult to find an environment in the real world where you're constantly surrounded by tons of creative people, tons of people your age, tons of people who are asking the right questions, trying to solve problems, trying to figure things out, super driven. Uh, so just collaborate. Collaborate as much as you possibly can. Work with as many people as you can. Figure out what kind of people you thrive around and how to make the people around you even better because that's what it comes down to out in the real world. If you want to be a successful individual, you got to make the people around you even better. Um, and I, I think that's also how you start to figure out what your specific role is going to be out in the real world as well because a lot of classes uh, in communication schools and stuff like that, they tend to give you certain labels and stuff like that that you feel like you need to adhere to. Um, but it's just, a that's all it is. It's a label and you're not necessarily going to figure out what you can offer and what you can bring to the table until you start experimenting and, and trying to create material. So put yourself on a deadline, 
do as much work as you possibly can and, and continue to collaborate and stay inspired, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. In terms of the things that I, I know now that I, I maybe should have taken advantage of more, like there are so many more resources than you could ever imagine through the school and, and especially in terms of filmmaking and production. Um, the opportunities to travel abroad, to work internationally, to sharpen your skills uh, with groups of people, I think is super beneficial and it's something that I wish I would have done more of, but I was still super lucky to be a part of the, the group that went to Vietnam and science and memory and programs like that. The experiential learning is, is so beneficial to your future. And I would say to definitely take advantage of, the, of those opportunities. All right, I wanna bring in um, Mohammed here. Um, and Mohammed, I don't wanna butcher your last name, so I'll let you say your last name. Uh, <laughs> and, it's all good. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and and uh, and just I know you have some questions. So Mohammed's been in a couple of my classes, the smartphone video class, and also uh, OR magazine. And he's an aspiring videographer. And we always like to give students, current students, an opportunity to kind of interact and uh, and ask their own questions. So Mohammed, you're on. <laughs> yeah, thanks for having me. Hi, Ty. Um, so I'm, my name is Mohammed Al <laughs> Uh Yeah, it's hard to pronounce my last name. Uh, as Ed said, I'm in one in some of his classes right now. I, right now, I am in the Oregon Magazine class, and hopefully, the production will be up soon. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I was watching actually your portfolio and your videos, and they are really impressive. It's really really impressive to watch all of that. And at the same time, it's a bit like it's intimidation. And as you said, like when you work with many creative people, you see the intimidation. So how did you deal with that actually? Yeah, for sure. That's a great question. And it's something I was always struggling with, especially as creatives. I think it's, it's kind of the default to compare yourself to other people and to sort of categorize people as here's a professional, here's someone who's doing way better work than I am. And maybe here's someone who isn't really putting in the effort. And trying to find yourself within that scale, I think, is one of the most destructive things you can do to your self-esteem and to the quality of your work, too. I think just staying true to the work that you want to do and, and continuously putting yourself on deadlines, like I said. Um, I think there was a video that Ira Glass put out that I saw maybe my freshman year that was talking about um, the benefit of constantly putting yourself on deadlines. Don't listen to the noise that's going on outside of you. Do what's true to yourself and continue producing work because eventually practice is what makes perfect and what, what makes you better, especially as a videographer. It's not just ideas that are going to come to you. And um, I mean, embrace your, embrace your vision, but it's really practicing. That's going to, that's going to sharpen your technical skills. And in terms of the intimidation, there's always going to be people out there who you might perceive to be better than you are, but I think it's really crucial to be inspired by those people rather than let it, let it get to you and say like, Oh, that's not anything I could ever achieve because it's honestly pretty incredible how fast you can grow if you stick to it. And I definitely, if I was thinking, man, this is the level that I'd be doing two years from three years from when I first picked up a camera, I probably wouldn't have believed it, but it was because I put in the work and because I reached out to the people I was intimidated by, asked them their processes, um, asked them what I could do to get involved with things that they were doing. That's what got me to where, to where I am today. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, you get many pieces of advice about what to do uh, like in, in school. But So I will focus more on the videos actually you did. Um, so I saw the videos and I'm just like wondering, like how did you make the videos and story you work on so smooth? Like, do you actually ask them to pause or repeat what they do, what they do or the sentences? They are really, really smooth to the point that I'm not like I try to do videos for the Oregon magazine and this is just me personally I'm every time I catch them it's just doesn't feel that smooth yeah I feel that definitely comes with practice I have a tendency when I'm doing interviews I, I don't really I've worked with a lot of people to say this uh, in a documentary setting who are from more fiction and direction backgrounds and it, it kind of urges me to see directors can conducting interviews, having people repeat things the way that they want to hear them. I think the, the authenticity sort of shines through in my videos because I allow the, the subject and the person that I'm working with and the person whose story I'm allowed to tell, uh, I'm just allowing them to be as authentic as possible. And a lot of it comes to just building relationships before you ever bring a camera into their environment. Um, I think that allows you to probably get the best 
sound bites and the best uh, best material I guess to work for but just uh, making sure someone is very comfortable before they they embark on their their own journey and 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 sharing their story with you because it is a privilege to be able to to tell stories like that and uh, I think having that approach going into that is super super helpful uh, I guess more in the technical aspects of the cutting and stuff like that it's just practice it's just watch documentaries and stuff like that where you can see where the transitions are really smooth and start taking note of oh okay they're covering the first part of this uh of this um vo or of this statement with a bit of b-roll or something like that like that makes a nice smooth transition into a sound bite or something like that like it just comes down to seeing what what makes sense to you and what what inspires you and just take a note of that and seeing how you can incorporate it into your own edit i see yeah you also do so many cool transitions so i'm just wondering like What's your process in making videos? Like, do you have shots and camera moves in mind before you go to the place where you record? Yeah. Or you just go there and you find how it should be in the moment? Like, how, that's a great, how yeah, that's a great question. I, I personally tend to intimidate myself when I create like a storyboard before I actually even go and shoot something because I think if I get in my own head about what I think a scene should look like, I miss so many of the opportunities that are presenting themselves naturally. So I tend to go into the environment with a pretty open mind of how things will be shot. I have a good idea of what everything's gonna look like in terms of lighting and the things I can control. Um, but I think just having an open mind, uh, shooting things how you see them. Uh, and then I think things will start coming to you along the way. Like if, I, if I'm in a scenario where I'm like, man, this, would, this, this scene would make a really good transition. I typically don't see that until I'm in the edit though. So. I think it's important to be intentional with your shooting and not just sort of pray and spray. Um, but at the same time, yeah, keep, keep an open mind, be observant of everything that's going on around you. Don't get too focused in, in what you're trying to create. And I think the best, uh, best things will come. Awesome. Yeah. How was it like uh, for you when you first started working with the blazers, were you like nervous, confident, like you knew, Oh, I'm going to do a great job or, you are like, I don't know what to do. I'm just going to see what they do. And then they will tell me. Yeah. It's just I, the questions I have. No, of course. Yeah, it is very valid. And I was very nervous. I, I think there were over 3,000 applicants for the position that I, that I was given. And I, I, knew, I knew a lot of the people who were applying to that position. And same thing. I, a lot of people I saw is better than I was. So I was coming into the role like, man, I don't, I don't know if I'm good enough for this. But I really had to get out of that mindset quick uh, because you hit the ground running. It's they call it an internship, but it is a full-time job and you're expected to do the same amount of work that everyone else who's been working for years uh, are doing. So um, I think that's really what allowed me to actually grow. I think if it wasn't in like a, like a traditional internship, I would have just kind of been observing and doing things that I could here and there, but they, they fully expected me to work independently and to, to create the quality of work that was being done around me. And I think that was super crucial. You either sink or you swim and, uh, that was super beneficial for for my skill set, and um, I think uh, I mean nervous nervousness is definitely definitely valid. It's something that you're going to feel no matter what. But I think it's sort of converting that energy into something that's more productive, which is what's going to what's going to help down the road. Mm -hmm. All right, <laughs> all right, guys. Uh, did you have another question, Mo? Or uh, I mean. They are more like specific about the videos, but the only original, like the, like general question I have is actually in your portfolio, which is really interesting. Um, you said a 90th percentile <laughs> introvert with an obsession for cinematography, emotional stories, and beautiful nature that surrounds me. Like, it's so interesting, and I'm like wondering, like. Uh, how long did it take you to think about writing this and why did you write it this way? Like, what do you yeah. like, this um, is me, they, they should see me this way or like? Yeah, I think I, think I wrote that in Creative Strat <laughs> for <laughs> when I first had to create my website. And it, it's a little bit cringy now that I look at it, but it, it was true of the time and it was super authentic to who I was. I think I, I saw a lot of portfolios of people trying to be something or trying to fit into a mold that they thought would work for a specific position that they saw themselves fulfilling. But I just want, I want people to know me as a person first uh, before a professional. And I, I thought that's, that's what would help. And hopefully people find that 
interesting like you said that, that's flattering i appreciate that um but yeah just just being authentic to yourself first before you're presenting yourself as a professional i think is super super beneficial well thanks guys this has uh, really been terrific and i can see this I, I you know lots of students um for years to come are going to be seeing uh, the, you know this uh, this chat and so thank you so much for taking the time to be a part of it um and uh we'll be in touch Thank you so much for having me on, Ed. I appreciate it.